you know, a while back we did an episode where we talked about this game, uh, but we didn't talk too much about it. I think it was probably the Pack South review episode. Yep. But now it's time to talk about this game in depth. Because we have played it many times and have indeed purchased it. And we know all there is to know about it. Sheriff of Nottingham, designed by Sergio Halavan, Brian Pope, Benjamin Pope, and Andre Zatz. So these are, I think, the Dice Tower dudes. Is that correct? I am not 100% sure, actually. I think I was told that these are the Dice Tower peoples. I Uh, can figure that out while we're talking. Yeah, but anyway, so Sheriff of Nottingham is obviously has the theme of ye Robin Hood, right? Kind of action. The art is... All awesome, with all kinds of crazy characters, really well designed and whatnot. Yep, I really like the art in this game. It's very, very professional arts. Uh, And basically, the game works like this. Someone is the sheriff of Nottingham. You know, King John is not in the picture, apparently. Uh, Well, he's sort of in the picture. People, merchants, who have nothing to do with Robin Hood and his merry men, or Little John, or Friar Tuck, or Maid Mary, or anything like that. They are merchants, and they need to bring things into Nottingham from the outside world in order to sell them in the market. You know, bread, cheese, chickens, the things that people need. Right. The sheriff, he's at the gate of Nottingham, and he doesn't want anyone bringing things into Nottingham that shouldn't be in Nottingham. Things that might help Robin Hood and his merry men, like... Crossbows. Crossbows. Rye bread. Pepper, silk for Maid Marion, you know, nothing like that is allowed, right? (laughs) Only things that are allowed are apples, chickens, cheese, and bread. That's it. No other imports. So every game, all you do is go around and someone's the sheriff and everyone puts between one and five goods in their bag and they look the sheriff in the eye you have it says you have an actual bag that you put actual cards in and snap shut. A snap that it makes a loud audible snap. And when you give it, you give this bag to the sheriff and look them in the eye and tell the sheriff what is in the bag. There are four chickens in this bag. Right. There's really only twenty different things you can tell the sheriff. You must pick one and only one of the legal good types. So chicken, bread, cheese, uh, apple. And you give a number between one and five. The number must be correct. If you have three cards in the bag, you must say three. Yeah, you can't lie about right? that. So there's really only 20 possibilities of things that you could say. One apple, two apple, three apple, four apple, five apple. One chicken, two chicken, three chicken, right, et cetera. And you hand him the bag. Now, what's in the bag could be fucking anything. Who knows what the hell is it? could be five crossbows, Jesus Christ. Yep. It could be five peppers. It could be anything. But what you tell him is something legal, because obviously you're not going to tell the sheriff something illegal. Then the sheriff completely of their own will may open or not open any number of bags. The sheriff's choices are hand the bag back to you. And once they hand it back to you, they can't ask for it again. You've got it back. Those five crossbows are going right into your stall. (laughs) Sell crossbows here. Crossbows. Or he can open it. As soon as he unsnaps it, that's it. He can't re-snap it. He's looking in that bag. Or he can engage with you. So, Scott... Uh, what would you pay me? Would you pay me five doubloons to not open your bag? I dare you to open my bag, Sheriff. You dare me. Go eh? for it. Would Go I dare you it. to open my this bag if my friend Muggsy were hiding? In- if my friend Crossbow was hiding in there? <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. If you, o- if you have in your bag what you said was in there and the Sheriff opens it, the Sheriff owes you money because... He opened your totally legit goods and wasted your merchant time. Man, if the TSA had to pay me every time there wasn't a bomb in my bag... That would be amazing. (laughs) Now, if the sheriff opens the bag and he finds something in there that's not supposed to be in there, like... My Scott, that's a nice crossbow you got in there with those apples. You said you had four chickens. I see three chickens, but this chicken is the king's chicken. Ah, is the king's chicken in your chicken basket. So the sheriff then throws away all the contraband if he catches it, and you got to pay him based on there's there's every card has a value that's points it's worth and dollar it's worth as contraband. Meaning if the sheriff finds it, yeah, there's 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 basically an award value and a penalty value. It's like something will be worth like seven victory points if it's in your stall at the end of the game, and you can use that as part of a bribe or whatever, like a Mm -hmm. deal, or it's just victory points at the end. And on the bottom, it'll say like four. In red, meaning if the sheriff sees it in your bag, you owe him four bucks if it's in there. Uh, If it's legal, it's always two. So the chicken's worth like three or four bucks or whatever. But if the sheriff opens your bag and you've got five legit chickens, the sheriff owes you ten bucks. Yep. 
So some of the goods that are contraband, like, you know, are just like crossbow or silk or whatever. And they're just worth a lot of money if you can sneak them into town. But there are certain other goods like the king's apples, the king's, you know, chickens, the king's rye bread. If you get that stuff into town, not only is it worth a lot, it also counts as cheese, bread, chickens, apples. Because at the end of the game, whoever has the most apples gets extra bonus points. Whoever has the most cheese gets bonus points. I guess it's because you get a reputation for being the best cheese dealer. I guess. I don't know. So the king's cheese counts as like three cheeses. It's like a super cheese. So if you get that into town, it's going to be really easy for you to win the cheese battle of who has the most cheese because you got three cheeses in one card snuck through. That aspect actually kind of like how Small World uh, modified the feel of Vinci by hiding the victory points. By doing that, it sort of makes the game like it makes the game not just calculated at the end. It makes it hard for someone to say, right. I'm winning by eight, so I should do this because the... If someone's got a bunch of normal contraband, that's just a bunch of victory points. But you don't know if they've got like the chicken contraband. You can't be, you're not secure right. in your when chicken you empire. S- when you sneak stuff into town or bring it into town legally, it's publicly visible what you have brought into town, except for contraband, which is face down. So people know how many cards of contraband you've snuck in, but they don't know what is on those cards. Nothing is better than when you convince the sheriff to not look in your bag. And he hands it back, and you pull five motherfucking counter and just lay them all face down. I can't, I cannot express to you how good that feels. So here's the thing in this game. Uh, number one, the way you draw the cards, we're not going to get into those rules because they're just sort of a little bit fiddly. It's hard to teach this to people. Yeah, but basically you, you draw cards in certain ways, and there's also discard piles, and sort of like a rummy situation It's easy for other players to know what you could have in your hand because some of the cards you draw are face up when you draw them. And if anyone's paying attention, which the sheriff should be, they can figure out what is in your hand. So if you're like five chickens, someone would be like, you just picked up like three peppers. There's no way you could have five chickens in your hand. It's not possible. Uh, And then they'll just call you out. Another thing is that uh, even when it is possible people could look around and count the visible cards. So later in the game, they're like, huh, there's already like 40 apples out. There's no way that you can do four apples right Except now. What it's I so, found it's happens, so unlikely. What I found happens in practice is there are so many cards in that deck. You can't count perfectly because there's so many freaking cards. People fuck up the soft count. That's Every also we true. play with. Like there was a game where I legit had four bread in my hand mm-hmm. and I was like, Four motherfucking bread. And the sheriff, w- and other people also, like, one bread, two bread, whatever. And the sheriff was like, there's a lot of bread out. There's no way you have bread. And no one was lying because the soft count was really misleading right. because there's so many cards and people overestimated what they'd yeah. seen. Right. Also, while well, sneaking contraband into town is such a hugely powerful play, if you can pull it off, it's actually kind of difficult. And from what I've seen, I- except in cases where someone manages to to bring in a ton of contraband into town, usually the person who wins this game is someone who is just able to really efficiently bring in the most legit goods in the town. Well, so it depends, because I I win a lot. I I seem to be really good at this game. I'm also very good. You are, but you have not won it in a while. You won the early games. I won many times. But I think the problem is you play a very conservative strategy. What Scott will do is be like, so I got four bags here. I'm going to open two of them, pay me $10 to not be in that lottery, and he'll do it randomly. Yep, it works. It works okay, but I've had better luck by, maybe it's just, it depends on who you're playing with, but. Yeah, if someone's just really obvious. Like, I had this beautiful moment with a friend of ours, where I looked at him, I'm like, you said you have five chickens in here. Uh, What would you like to offer me a bribe to not open your bag? And they're like, I would like to offer you four, and I immediately opened the bag because I knew there's a fucking contraband in there, and I knew they weren't clever enough right then to have been tricking me because I made them talk and make the decisions too quickly. Right, that's another thing. As much like settlers, I don't really see a reason to bargain with anyone. If someone's bargaining with you, that means they're going to pay you, they want to pay you some amount less than what the penalty is going to be. But if I just open the bag, I get the penalty money. Yeah, you say that. What if I offer you, look... I'll give you, I got five cards, right, in here. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, three of them are contraband. You'll make 12 bucks if you open my bag. I'll give you 15. Then I would do it, but no one has made those kind of offers. Everyone is off, always offers less than what the penalty is going to be. Yep. So there's no reason to, to take their deal. Also, 
If, also, I, I would if say I have that much contraband. Why would I offer that? Why wouldn't I just right? Well, you never know. I'm basically giving the, that person the game. I might propose a deal like that to see if the sheriff is like, oh, I know there's contraband in there now, no, and then he, like opens the bag anyway, no. and oh, it is actually just two chickens. Right now, there is right. So there are some strategies that are out there that I don't see. I haven't seen used enough. Right. One of them is I got fully legit goods. But try to offer a bribe to get the sheriff to open the bag and thus pay you the penalty. Or I want to see the strategy of, uh, no one's done this, of offered like one, everyone's always like three cards, maybe four cards. Uh, I would expect at least occasionally someone to be like one card and it's just the most valuable contraband because the sheriff's like, who would, who would lie about one? No, but that's the thing is that you put, your, when you're trying to sneak contraband in, you try to do it with just one because... Yeah. That's the only way you're getting it through. Except I, occasionally I've laid down five fucking contraband. Yeah, well, yeah, but I think one thing is that the rules of the game are such that all the goods you legally declared you get to keep even if they opened it. So yes. if you want to sneak a contraband in, you're better off because you only have two, basically one, two times the number of players' turns in the game. So there's five players, you have ten turns, two of which are going to be the sheriff. So you only have eight turns in the game to get cards through. you got to get as many cards through as possible. So, if you just spend a turn on one contraband, even if you get it in, that's even though that card's real valuable, that's not that great. You were better off going with like three ah. che three cheese and a contraband, declaring four cheese, and if they open it, while well, I still get my three cheese, that turn wasn't a waste. See, you say that, but you're playing the game. I think your style and strategy, well, I'll, we'll get to this in a second, the end game of all smart players, works um, if like everyone at the table is super fucking pro, mm -hmm. but in reality, it's like playing Bonanza. If I get the one through the sheriff, just because of the feel of the game and the way, like you want to open bags, it feels really good to open someone's bag. It's way more fun to open a bag than to give it back to him. And I feel like if the sheriff doesn't open, I mean, your if bag, we were playing TSA agent the game, or right, what is it? Is it more funny to say go on through, go on through, or is it more fun to like look through everyone's yeah. suitcases and see what they got? So I feel like if me and another player collude to like put small amounts of stuff through, so the sheriff is like, eh, like he doesn't bother opening our bags, it's probably more likely to open other people's bags. But even if you're if, if you're a sheriff, right, someone putting through a small bag, you know, it's like. If, oh, I'll, if someone says one, I'll open it no matter what. At pretty most, much, I'm out because too. the, the penalty is going to be small, and it's likely that they're trying to sneak something through, right? And if they if it isn't something illegal and they only did one, it's like, fine, I'll pay you the penalty of $2. You're not winning this game anyway if you spent a whole turn just to get one cheese. But I've seen people who had a turn where they just put one fucking thing in there come within two or three points of winning. Well, because so. they basically, you know, it's as good as... Putting one thing in there and getting it opened that's legal is as good as putting two things in and getting them through. Yeah. Right? Well, what it comes down to is this game, we haven't fully explored. Like It's, it's the same brain feel as Bonanza, this game. Mm -hmm. Serves the same niche of gaming. It's a really, really social game. There's a lot of like, what's in the bag? What's in the bag? Come on. Like, the, you just, you really, like, people slip barons into the bags, like cards from other games <laughs> just to fuck with the sheriff and like fun stuff like that. The game's super fun, just like Bonanza's super fun, because it's really a vote who wins game in the end if everyone's super smart, mm -hmm. and it might just be a completely... Well, there is a, it's a very largely vote who wins, but there's also a large element of luck, believe it or not. Oh, yeah, if you With just such get... A, if you just get, like, ton, if you Let's say you just keep drawing tons of chickens. It's just like, well, I'm probably going to win, because I can get these all in legally. I say Sometime five chickens, sheriff calls bullshit. I get, you know, ten extra dollars right. and my chickens. And it's like, if you, if you can consistently put in your bag every turn a large number of legitimate goods of the same type because your draw was so great, it's like, you don't need to even try for contraband because you're going to get the points for having most of legal good whatever. But the same thing and happens in Bonanza. If, if I just happen to keep drawing red beans, well, fuck y'all. I'm not trading for shit. I'm exactly. just my red beans. The sheriff is going to open your bag sometimes at least, and you're going to get extra points for that. And you're going to get all these legal goods, which are worth a ton of points. So it's just like, that's you know, if you go for the high contraband strategy because that's all you get, Sure, sometimes the sheriff won't open your bag and you'll get a million points, and then sometimes they will, and you'll have to pay a bunch of money and you'll get zero points that turn because he was all contraband. 
So I think basically Bonanza is probably one of our favorite, most go-to like social games because it's it's a real game. There is a pretty high luck factor, especially when everyone's good. Mm -hmm. And the game comes down to you're playing it with a bunch of friends who are super, super manipulative, and the game is this really abstract social game. Mm -hmm. Sheriff of Nottingham is the same brain feel, and it breaks down at about the same point. Like, Bonanza, if you play it too much, gets to this point where people toward the end of the game make very like, well, Scott's winning, so I can't trade with him, so I'll trade with you, and this very like, how many victory points do you have? They break down at the same level of analysis. The thing is, like, hey, let's say you're the sheriff at the end of the game. You see who's winning, right? And you're in second place, and it's you're like, do I open their bag and perhaps end up giving them money and they win, or do I not open their bag and then they sneak a bunch of stuff through and they win? So one thing Sheriff has the Bonanza doesn't is that the Bonanza trading and lying about like what's actually in your hand and what's coming up is more about convincing other people who's actually winning and convincing them to trade with you. This is more about distracting people, getting them to forget to open your bag, or like getting the focus on someone else. It's This is a game of redirecting your friend's attention. And at, that is actually a fun game. But I, among if five people who have complete poker faces and act like me and Scott play this game, it's the same as Bonanza. Everyone's like, I'll trade you this, fuck you. Yeah, I'm pretty much my only strat. If anyone ever says, hey, Scott... Pay me to not open your bag. I'm just like, I dare you to open my bag. I dare you. Go for it. Yeah. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? And However, whether, it doesn't matter what I've got in there. I say the same thing every time. That way, it's just like they don't know what to think. See, but I pay attention to things like when someone draws cards, do they reorder their hand? And then where do they draw cards out afterward? Yeah, if you watch, if you actually look at other people, you'll see like they just take the first three cards because everyone's going to sort their hand by good type, right? So if someone takes the first three cards in their hand and puts them in the bag... Okay, those three cards were next to each other. They're probably not lying. And someone yep. else like picks well, out three different cards in their hand and puts those in the bag. It's like or not I'm even that. that. What I'll just see is someone will take like two cards out of their hand, put them in the bag, then they take another card and put it in the bag. Uh, <laughs> opening that shit. <laughs> yep. Of course, at the same time, if they were clever and they did that, it becomes a poison cup situation, and that's where the game breaks down in the end. Okay, but in the same or way, or put stuff in your bag under the table so no one can see what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. But much like with games like Mafia, like, yes, and very pure analytical players will take a lot of the fun out of the game. But in practice, despite attempting to play analytically, people fuck up. They, they lose attention for a minute. Mm -hmm. they, a lot of people forget what they put in their own bag. Yeah. And the rules are very clear. Once a lot you of times it, the sheriff forgets what people declared. Like, the sheriff, like, people go to the sheriff and they're like, three cheese, three apples, four chickens, one bread. It's like, what did you have again? Three cheese? Was it three cheese? I forget. What, what did you say? Yeah. It's like the sheriff doesn't remember what you declared. That's a problem. So... It's a, I think it's a great game to buy. It, mm. This and Bonanza, if you own them both... You don't is, really need anything else in this category if you have those two. Exactly. I mean, the only other game in this kind of category at the high level is just Mafia, and you just need a deck of cards for that. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, like we said, the theme just goes so well with the mechanic of you're bringing goods into town and the sheriff is opening your bags or not. It's so that's you know not a lot of games can pull off the theme matching mechanic I think so well. The game is also ripe for a small number of very pointed expansions. I mean, what game isn't? La like Puerto Rico, like expanding it just overcomplicates it. Sure, kind of. Like, try to imagine just quickly a good expansion to Puerto Rico. Just some more buildings or something. Or Tigers and Euphrates. I'm not a big fan of the expansion. Well, you can't expand Tigers and Euphrates really well. It either. has an expansion. That's not good. Yeah, Fancy monument? I don't know. Yeah. But Sheriff of Nottingham, like, there's like there's some sort of like dangerous good. Sure. That, yeah, like little, exp like, bombs. I would make an expansion. Yeah, like bombs. Like, if the sheriff opens it, they get hurt. If the sheriff opens it, they get hurt. If they don't open it and it goes into your stall, you get negative hurt. points. Yeah, it's good. Something like that. Mm -hmm. You want to do things. The problem is this game, it can't be things that just change the analytical side of the game. It has to be things that change the psychological side. Kind of like how in Mafia, the psycho killer, like from a game theory, like game analysis standpoint, it's pretty straightforward how to use the psycho killer. In practice, people just want to, they want to be the psycho killer because it's cool. Psycho killer. Psycho killer. You just you want. You are just waiting to flip that psycho killer over, even if it loses you the game. Mm -hmm. So like, if someone's got the bomb in their hand, now there's this like they gotta keep their cool, even though they've got the rare cool thing and they get to do the cool thing with it. Mm -hmm. 
Like the bomb gets discarded, and then someone picks the bomb up and then puts their bag with five down. And this looks is at the this sheriff. is proven to be a popular, well-selling game. I've seen it around a lot, so I don't see why it wouldn't get expanded because every other board game that yep. does well gets expanded. And also, honestly. Groups of people playing this game are always having a loud good time. Yeah, I've never seen anyone have a bad time playing this, even if they lose. Yeah. So Seriously, this and Bonanza, own them both and alternate which one you play, and they both have infinite replayability together. Yeah, I guess, you know, the only thing, like I said, that's negative about this game is that there's just so many cards, and the deck, it, the drawing is and discarding is a bit fiddly. Yeah, the, the rule, it's weird. The rules, if someone's a gamer, you explain the rules once, they're like, okay, I get it. But someone who's not like really versed in like German board games and card games and everything, they will have a lot of trouble with the drawing and discarding rules until you just demonstrate it in the course of play. Yep. Luckily, it doesn't you can just you can just demonstrate it in the course of play. It doesn't affect their decisions very much. No. It's just two discard files and it's like they could have made this game with a lot less cards, probably. Yeah. But the, well, I don't know. Having so many cards, you know, it's interesting. If the game were a little simpler card wise, it would be more analyzable and be less fun in the long run. Maybe. The fact that there's so many cards, it pushes the game more toward the psychology bluffing, fucking with your friends. It's just annoying game. to have to deal with all the cards. Yeah. Sh shuffling them is It's not... hard to rebox it because it's just a million fucking yeah, cards. Yeah, you can't shuffle them properly at all. Yeah. And they always get sorted because, like, at the end of the game, all everyone's you know, tableaus or markets are full of legit goods and the discards are full of contrabands, mo way more contrabands than you can get into your What we do stall. is, like, the people who know how to play the game just shuffle the deck like crazy, split up, while yeah. someone else teaches I think you gotta just take game. all the cards and do the big wash method for, like, a few minutes to really mix it up. Or at least end of game wash just a little bit before you put it away. That's also true. All right. 